brothers and sisters, seventh week na po tayo out of 52 weeks of our project for the 500th anniversary. It's a preparation. Ang ating pong aim is to be grateful to the Catholic faith. But we have to pass it on to the next generation. So, isa lang po ang focus ng ating project. Sana mabuo ng mabuti ang pamilya as a Christian family. Maipasa uli sa mga kabataan at hopefully itong inyong mga anak ngayon ay maipasa nila sa inyong mga apo one day. O kayo mismo kayo nagpapasa sa inyong mga apo. Nakakasali sila sa gantong uh, pag, uh, pag uh, pakikiisa sa ating video um, video show. So sana gamitin nyo for the families of your children. So as usual po, we always use the Word of God as our parang guide, light. Ito po ang reference ng ating pag-uusap tungkol sa buhay pamilya. Pakinggan po natin. It comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 4. The man had relations with his wife Eve. And she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next, she bore his brother Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your head. But if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is toward you yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out in the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord then said, What have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore, you shall be banned from the soil that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer give you its produce. You shall become a restless wanderer on the earth. Mga kapatid, baka nabibigla. Pupunta tayo sa unang, unang libro ng ating Biblia, Genesis chapter 4. And I must say, the first tragedy. Tama ba? Imagine po, mga kapatid. Ang mismong kapatid niya ang pumatay sa kanya. Si Cain po ang pumatay sa mismo niyang kapatid. Kadugo. Hindi kaya Merong gustong sabihin ang salita ng Diyos sa fourth chapter of the first book of the Bible. Ano kaya yon? Meron pong relasyon. Ang pagkakasala ni Adan at ni Eva, ang kanilang mga magulang ni Cain at Abel, sa nangyari sa magkapatid. There is a generational sin. May naipapasa po pag masama po ang ugali. At ano tong kasalanan ni Adam and Eve? Avarice, greed. They were so delighted of the fruit, nakalimutan po nila ang utos ng Diyos. Pero iba po ang kasalanan ng magkapatid, ni Cain sa kanyang kapatid. Ano? Envy, jealousy. Pero mas higit po ang gustong ituro ng Biblia, nakamamatay ang kasalanan. I've searched for 
ano kaya ang sentiment ni Adam and Eve? Noong nakita nilang walang buhay ang kanilang bunsong anak na si Abel, wala pong sinabi ang Biblia. Pero nung kinugol namin, ano ang murder of Abel? Anong sentiments na una magulang? I-google din niyo po. Ang dami pong paintings. At halos ito po ay parang huwaran modelo ng mga iba't ibang pamamaraan na ipinakita sa sining. Sa sining po ng artes papano ang kamatayan ng anak na si Yesu Kristo ay naramdaman ng kanyang inang si Maria. Tingnan niyo po, para pong lakyata ni Michael Angelo. So, kadikit po ng kabutihan ng mga magulang at pwedeng magkaroon ng modelo kabutihan ang mga kabataan. Last week po natin na pag-usapan. The opposite po. Kapag masama po, ang pag-uugali ng mga magulang, kamukha ni Adan at ni Eva, lumaban sila sa pag-uutos ng Diyos. Tingnan natin, si Akain at si Abel, nagkaingitan. Or at least, isa sa kanila, naisip niyang, bakit mas mahal ng Diyos ang kanyang kapatid? Naturoan ba ni Adan at saka ni Eva ng kabutihan ng kalang mga anak? I think so. Kasi both Cain and Abel were offering a sacrifice to God. They did not simply, let's say, raise up a herd like Cain or put up a nice garden like Abel. No, they were taught to offer gifts of sacrifice to God. I think magandang pagtuturo yan ng mga magulang. Pero, is that enough? Ang tawag doon ay ritual ng relationship sa Diyos? Can God just be a religion and not a spirituality? Buhay spiritual, buhay kaluluwa. Yun po ang tanong ko. At ito po isa sa mga tema ng ating 52 Weeks. Are our parents, kayo po, are able to transmit the faith, the life of the Spirit, the life of God, exampled by, modeled by, Jesus Christ and the saints to your children? Kasi po, I, I have met so many good, 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 good parents po, talaga mabuti. I've seen them in Catholic schools, during parents' meeting, I've seen them in covenanted communities, they were able to transmit provided to their children let's call it good food proper dressing um, sending them to good schools making sure that you know they act socially prim and proper pero very few po ang nakita ko that were able to transmit the faith Kaalaban po una, doctrine. Bakit? A reason to believe. And more importantly, behavior. Kasi, sabi nila, education is never taught. It is caught. But also, faith is not simply taught. Hindi lang po yan sa isipan. Yan ay damdamin, debusyon. At pag hindi mo makita yan sa mga magulang, wala kang ginyan sa buhay mo. The transmission of the faith. And how do they transmit it to the children? I must say, the care of the soul consists also in seeing my parents forgive each other and even go to sacramental confession. I cannot forget how every Thursday before First Friday, my dad and my mom brings us to Santa Cruz Church in Manila where there is a exposition of the Blessed Sacrament in adoration. Pero pipila po kaming lahat. Apat kami pipila sa confessionario. 
they transmitted a sense of God. Beyond our relationships at home, they gave us a nourishment of the soul. May mga parents, they said, eh, andyan na yung mga Catholic schools, Ateneo de Manila, Lasal, di ba, mga brothers yun. Madre, Assumption, Benedictines, sa Saint Scholastica, Don Bosco, sabi natin, kami mga pare at mga brothers, sila magturo tungkol God. No, brothers and sisters. The home is the real nurturing of the soul. In the home, when the children see their adult their parents live the faith. It is transmitted. Instead, the opposite. Pag masama po ang bibig, masama ang ugali, palamura, ganun din po ang siyang magiging bunga sa mga damdamin at kalooban ng, ng mga bata. So therefore, let's continue with this, sana with this reflection on our faith para the 500th anniversary that we are trying to prepare for is not only gratitude because we have received the Catholic faith, pero sana it may become for us a way of transmitting so that our children will know how to transmit to their own children. Your children's children will live the Catholic faith. Ngayon po, let's go back for a life testimony of the same person who did it last week. From Baguio, an expert in Filipino family, Professor Annie Salvador. One beautiful afternoon, I was having a conversation with a good friend. Two decades ago, they had migrated to North America in the hopes of giving their two young daughters a better life. Over pastries and coffee, as he played catch up with each other's lives, she became very sad. My older daughter is away, constantly traveling with her boyfriend. They want to see as much of the world as they can. The younger one lives near us, also with her boyfriend. I kept my face expressionless, not wanting her to think I was judging. I know, I know, we never wanted things to go this way. You know me. We raised them in our Catholic faith. Of course, we discouraged them from moving in with their boyfriends. Oh, the fire discussions we had. But they went ahead. We couldn't stop them. Was it a mistake to bring them here? Where the lifestyle is so different, so modern? Is this the price of wanting them to have better opportunities? I held her hand, shaking my head. So we accepted their decisions. We stay in touch. My love for them is still there. It's just more painful. She released a deep sigh and shrugged. What else to do? Itatakwil ko ba? Among the many duties we have as parents so is to foster our children's moral and faith education. Yes, in addition to housing, feeding, clothing, and schooling them, on top of providing them with a safe and organized environment, we are bound to give them affection, companionship, understanding, and the benefit of moral guidance, self-discipline, and religious instruction. Even without the 1987 Family Code's legal instruction, from which that is quoted, we are morally bound by natural law itself. This moral and faith education is delivered through socialization, a sociological term for the process of acquiring and internalizing the norms, attitudes, and values of society. Considering that the family is a person's first, closest, greatest, longest, and most influential social group, it makes complete sense that parents are in the best position to socialize a child. While our children are young and we have them with us, it's logically the window for this. Socialization can go by word. We keep communication lines open. We engage in regular meaningful conversation. We inquire about their schoolwork, their friends, 
the experiences, and their favorites. We take advantage of teaching moments. We share our values and beliefs. And yes, we give them lectures. Socialization can also go by deed. And because our children watch us more than they listen to us, especially by deed. What they hear is nowhere as powerful as what they see, whether or not we intend it. As far as societies go, our country is perhaps one of those where children stay with their parents the longest moving out. This means that we have much time to socialize with them, to groom them into the decent adults, to apprentice them in responsibility, to build their internal fiber, to inform their conscience, and then we let them go. Our purpose, in essence, is to grow adults and release them into their own lives. Adulthood, in many ways, is a separation between parent and offspring. It needs to be in every sense of the word, but it needs to be where it matters. Decision-making, accountability, adult relationships, financial independence, faith and values, all by personal decision and not by default. This can be heartbreaking, but it is necessary. From being parent-child, where one is essentially leader, teacher, superior, and the other follower, student, and subordinate, the dynamic needs to shift towards an I-thou relationship. In many ways, we need to stand outside them in the face of their free will, much like the way God stands outside of us in our own power to choose. Even if we dislike it, even if we disagree, even if it paralyzes us in fear, we need to let them go, but not completely. Father Larry Richards in EWTN's Open Line radio show has a three-point advice for callers who would like to bring their other children closer to the faith, or even back to it. First, he says to pray for them. No matter how distant a beloved child has gone, we can keep them in our thanksgiving and, and our supplications as long as we want. We can place them in the hearts of Jesus and Mary, where they will surely be looked after. Second, he says to witness to them, as in the process of socialization. The way we live our lives is our most powerful method of influence towards our children, no matter how old they get. And third, he says to love them, even if, especially if.